Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Mings, and as I promised you guys, we are back here with another Advanced Wars game on the map Harsher Truths. I told you guys you'd see this map a lot. This is the second replay out of four in total that I plan to host on the channel. Because, um, as you know, this is the first map in a tournament that is currently ongoing in the competitive scene. So it's a very important map to get good at. So, uh, if you haven't watched the first one I did a few days back, when I was playing against Star Flash, what are you even doing, man? Go watch that right now. That match was absolutely crazy. This is a good match, too. I, I may even say it's a banger. But if you haven't watched the first one, you definitely should, because that one was insane. But if you watched that and you were like, man, that was a great match, I'd like to watch another game on this map, well... You were in luck, my friend, because today I am showing off a, another practice match that I played against the one and only King Arthur, my grand nemesis, the guy who I have never been able to beat in about, I think, 20 to 30 games. Um, he is an incredibly strong player. He's not like 1500 rated like Star Flash or Degis or some of the other monsters that I play on the channel, but he's a pretty damn good player. I'd say he's probably a little bit underrated in terms of rating. I think he plays roughly around the level of a 1200, maybe even 1300 on a good day. He's very strong. He even showed up in the Grandmasters tournament in Season 2. And uh, one of the things about King Arthur, what makes him so annoying to play against is that he is incredibly resilient. He's very good at playing when he's behind. Even if you get a small advantage in the early game, he'll just keep coming at you. He's not as insanely aggressive as Star Flash. Like, he won't keep yeeting troops into you. He's a little bit more defensive, but he's incredibly hard to dislodge. Very, very annoying. It feels like he's trolling you whenever, he, whenever you play against him. I can't really describe it. It's just this increasing annoyance that I have whenever I play a game against him. Like, just, wh why won't you die? And then he just comes back and wins the match. And that's happened like 20 times in a row. <laughs> so, you may remember him from uh, the um, strongest Drake player I ever faced video. He was the player who taught me the value of global damage and just... One of the first, like, really good players that I ran into when I started my Advanced Wars competitive career. And we've been playing a lot of matches against each other since. And this time around, we're training on Harsher Truths for the tournament. This is another live match, which means that when we played this match, we had a, a timer. So we had to move quickly. But that does tend to create pretty interesting matches, so I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Just don't expect the level of play that you'd get from a standard match. So once again, on this map, uh, I decided to go with Kindle. Because... Yeah, I explained it in the last video. You guys saw how insanely good Kindle was in the last video. She ended up being my pick in the tournament as well. That game is currently ongoing. I'll host it whenever it's done. Uh, but I don't think I need to explain again why Kindle is so good on this map. Just mixed space map, lots of properties. Urban Blight just interrupts, deals damage, gives you insane firepower bonuses. It's just an overall really broken power. King Arthur decided to pick Andy, which is not a bad pick for this map. I believe... The one and only Go7 picked Andy in the tournament as well, so there's definitely some play for Andy here. He doesn't really have a day-to-day, -day, so Kindle kind of wins out uh, initially. But of course, Andy's dream is to get those uh, hyper-upgrade value shots where he just pops hyper-upgrade and like repairs half his army value back. Um, Combined with, of course, the plus one movement, the plus 20% firepower, a very underrated aspect of Andy's superpower, just gives him such a good turn. I mean, he has one of the best superpowers in the game for its costs, I'd say. Six stars for, for that level of value is just crazy. He can pop Hyper Repair 2 to counteract some of the damage done by Urban Blight, but it's not something you see a lot. Um, I've heard some people say that Andy counters Kindle because she deals global map damage and he repairs, but of course, that's a noob attitude. Uh, that's not how it works at all. Uh, Andy doesn't really get... He doesn't really hard counter global damage COs because what they do is they pop their global damage and then they go for the kills. And of course, if Andy's units are destroyed, he can't repair them. So, no, global damage doesn't counter Andy per se, or sorry, Andy doesn't counter global damage. It might actually even be the opposite. Global damage can counter Andy if you play well. Of course, if you just pop the global damage and you don't follow up with an attack, then yeah, he'll pop Hyper Upgrade and just wreck you. But a good player will position themselves for an attack, pop their global damage, and then push in and try to eliminate as many of Andy's units as possible. And if you deal sufficient damage, then his hyper upgrade simply won't be able to get him back into the game. 
If you don't deal sufficient damage, on the other hand, Hyper Upgrade will be popped and he will absolutely wreck you on the counterattack. So it really is, you know, up to the Andy player to position himself wisely, to be defensive, to set himself up for a counterattack, which is why he's such a good CO for King Arthur, I think, because King Arthur is the king of comebacks and Andy is very much a comeback CO. So I understand why he picked him. However, I will say, despite that, Kindle has the advantage of this map because just look at the amount of properties. Look at the amount of captures. You know, Andy can repair, sure, but it still interrupts the caps. Um, I, I mean, I guess he could pop Hyper Upgrade and then still cap, but uh, he's not going to be able to do that all the time. Urban Blight is three stars, Hyper Upgrade is six stars. Again, he could pop um, he could pop Hyper Repair, but um, it still won't give him the cap if the infantry was on full health. So uh, yeah, it's um, I I'd say it's a, it's a tricky matchup for Andy on this map for sure. But let's see what King Arthur was able to do. It's not like I've been able to beat this guy before. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let us get started. So, like with the other match, you know, um, on Harsher Truths, you go for the neutral bases first. Nothing spectacular here. Uh, I do believe uh, this is... Um, I don't actually remember if this was played before my match against Star Flash or, be or after. I think the Star Flash match was a little later, so I'm a little bit less experienced on this map this time around compared to what I was against Star Flash. I think I played three games against Star Flash in total and one game against King Arthur. I think King Arthur was before the Star Flash matches. So, uh, yeah. But this time around, I'm not opening... Or, sorry, this time around... King Arthur is doing the wise thing, what I should have done in the match against Star Flash. He's actually opening tank on his strong side. And this is definitely what you want to do. So, let's see what I decide to respond with here. So, uh, yeah, I, I just go at tank on my strong side as well. You don't have to meet the tank with a tank of your own. If your opponent pushes your weak side, you can push his weak side. Of course... Uh, one player one has the initiative advantage, like his attack will come before yours because he's player one. But that doesn't mean you necessarily have to respond to everything your opponent does. Sometimes it's nice to just respond to their aggression on your weak side with aggression on their weak side. You just go like, okay, I can base race you. And here's the thing, Kindle does base races way better than Andy. Because she can pop that Urban Blight to dislodge the unit on the base and take it over. So Andy can't really do that as well. He doesn't really have any firepower increases outside of his super and whatever passive boosts he gets from his CO powers. So uh, yeah, you... And here, by the way, yeah, so this is, once again, this is why it's kind of hard to pressure this side, even with two bases. Like, what are you going to do about this Kindle tank? Right? What are you, you going to do about it? Well, attacking it on a base? Yeah, that's not going to work out. And I move my tank in here as well. So we're both just applying pressure, uh, but I'm defending my weak side as well with the tank. Don't really think I need to do much more than that. So, um, but, you know, uh, one thing that I've noticed about Harsher Truths is that it's a battle of Com Towers, really. Because both of the Com Towers are very much contested. And whoever goes for the Com Towers early usually gets a big advantage. If you can hold both of them, as you can, as you saw in my match against Starflash, I just ended up winning that. King Arthur sends his Tang into the center now. He realizes he can't really do much here. So he sends it to interrupt my captures. Here it's doing some good work. It can fly down here. It can go up here. It can, generally speaking, be very annoying. Again, always remember, on a mixed bias map, position your units in such a way that they can threaten multiple areas at once, right? A tank in this corner only threatens the corner. A tank in the center can threaten all four corners. So it's kind of like, you know, if, if any of you play competitive chess or if you played a little bit of chess, you will know the pieces are much stronger when they are located in the center of the board. It's very much the same thing with Advanced Wars. Uh, units that are located in the center have more flexibility and they're stronger than a unit that's like hidden away in the corner. So here, I send my tank over, start capturing the city. This is one of the big disadvantages of playing Andy versus Kindle. Very hard to interrupt captures against her because you don't have any firepower. She has that 40% increased firepower. Your infantry, unless you attack from a mountain, is not is gonna take pretty much as much damage as they dish out, and Kindle's just going to win that. Here, King Arthur does go for the interrupt. Uh, of course, this allows me to move the infantry away, get a city, uh, get a city boosted uh, tank attack. Arthur can, of course, respond with a tank from his bases, and he has another tank as well. So he just goes for the for the shot. You may call that a Manx Infantry, but this was actually something that I thought, that I predicted that he would do. And uh, looking at it now, I don't really know why I still went ahead with it. I guess it's a live match, so. But yeah, I'm not going to be able to push him. A one base versus two base, that's a, that's a 
not a good position to be in. You should never push on your weak side when your opponent has a... Especially not when your opponent is already outnumbering you. That is just not going to end well. So I guess I just threw an infantry there, looking at it. Yeah. It's kind of dumb. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Again, I was, I was less experienced playing on this map at this point. So here, I just uh, blocked the comm tower. He can attack me, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I will get Battlecopters out soon enough. In fact, I get one out right now, so already. Um, you can kind of push on your weak side once the Battlecopters come in, because you have the, the power of two airports. But of course, your opponent can just unbuild anti-air, and there's not that much you can do. But of course, your Battlecopters can always dart elsewhere. So day seven rolls in. Let's see what King Arthur decides to do. He finishes capping multiple cities. Getting a nice little income. Moves his tank over here? I don't really know. I guess he doesn't want this infantry. I don't really know what he's trying to do here. Maybe trying to surround the comm tower, possibly? Could be. Gets an anti-air out. That's, a, that's the correct response. And yeah, he's shifting a lot of his forces north. Um, I mean, I do get it. You don't want to overextend on the weak side. It's very hard to attack, especially with Kindles. I'm, I'm guessing he just feels like those tanks should go elsewhere, which, eh, I, I can I can absolutely respect that. That's a respectable decision. Just move away. Uh, he has a pretty strong force over here. Two tanks on his weak side right now. So here, I decide to go for the interrupt. It's kind of a free infantry. He can move his tank onto the city, but I do have a Bottlecopter. He does have an Untire, though, so, eh, yeah, um, he might get it. We'll see. I decide to go for another interrupt. This time I roll a little low. I really don't want him to get a get an income advantage. And here he pretty much just gives me a comm tower. So um, again, this is kind of my strong side. So I'm kind of I'm gonna get this comm tower regardless. But um, I think there is a play that he could have done to delay this by at least a couple of turns. Uh, I could have built a Battlecopter on this side, for example. There's no Untire, so but this way, there is nothing he can do to prevent the capture of this Comb Tower. I'm going to get it, uh, securing that 10% bonus. And here's the thing about the Comb Towers and Harsher Truths, right? If I can take mine and just deny his, it's very easy to... It's hard to take a Comb Tower from your opponent, but it's not so hard to deny it, especially on his Kindle, who can Urban Blight. So if you can take one Comb Tower and then deny your opponent's Comb Tower, it's not as good as having two comm towers, but it's almost as good because you're denying 10% firepower from your opponent. So it's kind—it's almost like getting 10% extra defense. Not quite, but almost. Um, here, I decide to go and yeah, right, right, right. I see it. This is like just some of the stuff that Kindle can do. And again, he can definitely counterattack me here. But keep in mind, he's Andy with no firepower increase. This means he cannot two-shot tanks on cities. Right? Two tanks into my tank on city means this tank's going to be left on one or two HP. This means that I can move another tank in and shoot. So, very hard for King Arthur to attack into this. This is one of the reasons, again, why Kindle is so strong on this map. Of course, what he can do is he can move in here, strike both of these tanks. But I do plan to build a tank on my weak side. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there we go. Another tank. Now, the tank can't reach this property. Uh, but, one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, no, it's not guarding. One, two, three, four. It's guarding this tank, but not this tank. But this tank is on an empty missile silo. I can build a Bottlecopter, though. I wonder if that... Yeah, that, there we go, exactly. So, now, suddenly, this position is a lot stronger. Because I have two Bottlecopters and four tanks on my weak side. So, again, I did say early on that you shouldn't necessarily push on your weak side. But you can, if you're willing to build enough Bottlecopters. Then suddenly, you can kind of turn your weak side into sort of a strong side, if you want to. Um, so, again, it's going to be hard for me to attack because King Arthur has two ground bases, but basically, I know that I'm going to get this Comm Tower now. So, uh, what my focus of this battle is going to be is going to be on attacking as many of his infantry as possible. Uh, the Scorched Earth strategy that I was talking about in a previous video, where you just deal as much damage to the enemy infantry as you can and then pull back. That way, they're not able to take your properties. So, now I have this Comm Tower. All I need to do now is pressure this Comm Tower to make sure he doesn't get it. And then I'm up against an Andy with 0% extra firepower, which is a very good position to be in uh, as Kindle. So day 8 rolls in. Let's see what King Arthur decides to do. Ah, I just... I gave him an attack on my tank there. Interesting. Oh, right. I think I had to do this. Yeah, because if I hadn't... Uh, actually, did I really have to do this? I mean, he can't reach this infantry. I don't really know why I did that. I guess we blame the live match, I suppose. Yeah, that's just a free hit. That's kind of shit. I don't really know. Well, yeah. He rolled kind of low, though. 7-6. So it's not so bad. He cleans up some of my infantry. I am preventing his captures, but it does come at the cost of my infantry. And he actually goes for it here. Very interestingly, he goes for it here. But remember what I told you guys. It doesn't work. 
He doesn't have the firepower. I don't really know why he went for this. I mean, again, live game is, is, is a possibility here. But um, this is uh, this is just not going to work for him because he doesn't... You need... With a 10% firepower increase, you have a chance of two-shotting a tank. It, it's very low. Um, it's not... I, do, I don't have the cocks in my head, but there's a very small chance you might be able to pull it off. With 0%, I don't think you can... You might be able to if you roll max, but with 20%, you do it 100% of the time. So I don't really know why King Arthur went for this. I mean, I guess he, again, felt like felt comfortable enough to do this, but I have two Battlecopters and many more tanks on the way, so I'd say this was a bit of a mistake on his end. Now, here's the thing, though. He is Andy, so he can pull back these weakened tanks and save them for a rainy day, but not if I'm able to kill them first. So, But my infantry, I am kind of being a little bit reckless with my infantry here. King Arthur is still attacking the Comb Tower, even though he realizes I will get it. Build some mech. I have built mechs too on this map, but they're not fantastic on mixed base maps. Uh, they're just too slow. When you pay, play mixed base maps, you definitely want to focus on mobility. Fast units are generally... Con yeah, this... Oof. So here, yeah, I sack... I pretty much sack a Bottlecopter because... Um, my, my, my reasoning for this is that, yeah, sure... I move a Battlecopter in, I, I kill a tank. If he moves his uh, Untire to kill my, my Battlecopter, I might be able to kill that and then get a city-boosted um, hit on his Untire. Keep in mind, my Urban Blight is right around the corner. I pull back my tank, attack again. So this is a pretty even engagement, actually, even though he struck first. I continue to damage his infantry as much as I can because I realize that that is how I'm going to do it. I just get my Urban Blight, which is nice. Um, he can pop his hyper repair next turn, but most of these units will be repaired up anyway, so it won't, we won't really get that much value out of it. Come to think of it, though, may have been better to save my Urban Blight for the next turn, for this eventual thing here, but eh, we'll see. Alright, I do get a nice shot off with the tank here, so that is a, that is a tank that just gets schwapped. Schwapped, as they just like to say. And boom! Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Suddenly, I have a second Comb Tower captured. Blocked off. And I don't think there's anything King Arthur can do to stop this. The Antire is slowed down by the woods. The tank... Actually, one, two, three, four... No. The tank cannot reach. So, uh, yeah. No matter what King Arthur does here, he will not get that comb tower. Which means I'm going to sit at a 20% firepower increase. You saw how that turned out against Starflash. That's not easy to fight against. Especially not when you're Andy versus Kindle, and you already struggle on a day-to-day -day basis. Keep in mind, Andy wants to keep his units alive. Andy enjoys it when there's no firepower boosts on the map, because that allows him to pull his units back, keep them alive, save them for a hyper upgrade. It's pretty much the best situation I could be in. He takes the shot against my Battlecopter. He continues to attack my infantry. He can definitely try and get... He can definitely try and take this tower back, but I still have a decent presence in the area. Moves his tanks to hunt infantry? I, I disagree with this a little bit. Sure, it's nice to mop up these infantry here, but I think his tank would have been better positioned over here. He he needs to take the comb tower from me. I think he's very confident that he's going to get it. But look at that. He, he has he has difficulties finishing off my units because he doesn't have a firepower increase right now. So uh, he's struggling. Has to even... Oh, he has to attack an infantry camping with power up. Just look how much that hurts. Look how much that hurts. That is scary. Builds another Antire. Of course, he has to. Day 9 rolls in. I now go for this capture. Um, I think he can... Yeah, he can interrupt it if he wants to. It's going to hurt him, though. And again, just Scorched Earth strategy, as I was talking about earlier. Just attacking infantry as much as possible. Preventing his uh, preventing his ability to cap as much as possible. And just holding on to that comm tower for dear life. Having some infantry battles over here. I even take a shot on the city right here. And now I just pull back a little bit. Because I recognize that he has a pretty big uh, force over here. But with a 20% firepower increase right now, my engagements are just going to be so much better than his. He is really going to struggle pretty hard right now. So, King Arthur's turn rolls in. He continues to mop up my infantry. Interrupts my cap down here. Gets another cap interruption. We are pretty much tied on income. I'm slightly ahead of him. He takes a shot with his... Battlecopter, interestingly enough. I mean, I guess my... Okay. 
I would maybe have run away, but uh, I guess he just, he's in Scorch Charge mode too. Oh, okay, he's trying to block the Battlecopter. Is he able to do it? Yeah, I think so, actually. Yeah, that's a good block, actually. Very impressive to see that in a live format. Yeah, he's able to block off my Antire from reaching his Battlecopter. At least I think so. So he's gathering up his forces a little bit on his strong side. Again, gobbles up some free infantry. Nothing wrong with that. You want to do that from time to time. Builds a medium tank, because uh, I have a Neo tank right now. So I uh, don't really agree with this. Neo tanks kind of hard counter medium tanks because they have one extra move and they deal a lot of damage to them. He does have an artillery though, but uh, I'd say the only good counter to a Neo tank on your side is either, well, he can't really build a bomber because it's all the way over on the other side. I feel like he kind of needs a Neo of his own right now. That medium tank is just not going to cut it. Uh, I, I'm not even scared of it because I know that I, it's a Neo tank with 20% increased firepower. Here, I, just, I get uh, an airport boosted attack. And I just attack his tank with my Antire, because why not? And suddenly, King Arthur's in a pretty bad, rough spot on his weak side right here. And again, just with every engagement that I make, I just get more and more value with that 20% increased firepower. So, uh, it's gonna be kind of tough to be King Arthur in a little bit now. I can even, I even pull my units back for repairs, because I can do that. Now, you may notice, his superpower is ready. So I'm not pushing right now. If I can't get a kill, I'm probably not going to attack that much. So, pulling back while Hyper Upgrade is uh, almost about to finish, uh, that's kind of important. So, right now, he has this Hyper Upgrade, but what is he really going to get out of it? A tank here, one HP here, some infantry, not exactly what you'd call a game-ending Hyper Upgrade. You know, he could repair these two to win the infantry engagements, but it's not really the value that he's looking for. I don't actually remember if he pops it now or not. He does actually pop it, okay. So... Let's, 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 let's pop that again. Let's, let's look at the values getting out of that. So he's currently at 83,000. And he pops Hyper Upgrade and he goes up to... 92,000. So from from 83,000 to 90... 90 is, was that 191,000? Almost 92,000. So barely 9,000 funds of value worth of Hyper Upgrade. So that is bad. <laughs> that is... That is very, very, very bad. Um... I uh, I don't think that is what you need. I think him popping it, I mean, it was a live match. So you don't really have much time to think on these things. But I will say, it's... Uh, I think it was a bit of a desperation move, popping his Hyper Upgrade. I mean, again, it will give him a slight advantage in this area. He'll be able to capture some of these cities a little bit easier because it heals his infantry. So you could maybe make the argument that it's not bad. Oh, what is he doing here? King Arthur. What is this move? You're giving me a city boost? Again, live matches, man. They're wild. People just do weird shit. He's setting up some uh, some defenses here. But I have a Neo tank. This is going to be rough for him. That medium tank ain't going to do squat, buddy. The plus one move, though, insanely nice on mixed base maps. So annoying to go up against Andy when he gets that plus one move. You're not always expecting it, either. You know, when you're up against Adder, you're constantly monitoring that plus one and plus two move. But against Andy... You can very quickly tend to forget about it. See, I don't really know why King Arthur decided to just give me a free tank shot there. Kind of weird. I even get a little interrupt on him, which is nice. And again, just, again, this is what I was talking about. Scorch Earth. Like, I'm throwing away true infantry on this side, but I'm just damaging his infantry so he can't get the Comm Tower. It's definitely worth it. So here, I actually feel comfortable attacking because, again, I have a 20% firepower increase, so I know I can wall break. I can even kill the artillery. And I'm not really that scared of his medium tank. That medium tank is going to do what? On the forests? It's going to do about 40% damage to me. I'm going to hit back. Probably do as much. So, and he doesn't have artillery support anymore. So, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is looking pretty bad for him. We are still pretty equal in value and unit count and income. But again, he has absolutely no prospects of taking these comm towers back now. I'm pushing him on this side, so he can't move his forces to the west. I outnumber him on his, on his weak side, so this comm tower, is, he's not going to take it back. So let's see, but King Arthur is a resilient guy. Again, um, never underestimate him, even when you're ahead. He's very good at coming back. So here we go. Yeah, I was pretty on the money there <laughs> with, with my calcs. 4-4 four, four, or 6-6. Six, six, 4 HP of damage each. So again, not terribly... I mean, value-wise, this was a good engagement for him, but next turn I'm going to shoot back and destroy his medium tank. So, not really going to work out well for him. 
So he does need to take care of his Antire. There is Lifeline right now because I have bot of three Battlecopters in the area. So if he loses his Antire, he immediately loses all of the engagements here. He has to pull his uh, Battlecopter away from my Antire over there. And um, in comes another Urban Blight with his repairs nowhere in sight. That's a pretty nasty Urban Blight. Let's just see how much damage that dealt in in total. 106,000 and it goes down to 98,000. So almost as much damage dealt, and here, this is what I was talking about. This is what I was talking about right here. Just look at this. Look at this. You see that base right there? Look at that. Look at that. Urban Blight deals three damage. Tank comes in. One shots. Base gets captured. This is the sole reason why I think Kendall is MVP on this map, because she can do that. And it's very hard to see. Not a lot of people see this coming. And King Arthur certainly didn't. And now I'm capping his base. Now he can interrupt it, but look what happens if he tries to interrupt it. He moves his tank over here. So he can move his infantry over here to shoot and interrupt. But what do I do then? I move onto his base and I shoot his tank with 40% increased firepower. And I'm also blocking his airport. So he can't build battlecopters now. If he dedicates one infantry to attacking my, my infantry capping his airport, then he won't be able to interrupt my base cap. Or at least not, he won't be able to kill my infantry. And I'm bringing in the Antire too, because I know his tank has to attack my infantry. Otherwise, he loses his base. So right now, I am just kind of establishing dominance all over the map, using my 20% increased firepower. And here, you can see I'm doing a pretty, yeah, it's a pretty devastating attack. Battlecopter comes in. Now I'm also threatening this city. And I can pull my units back for a pair. He doesn't really have the luxury of doing that, thanks to Urban Blight. And now I'm interrupting this cap as well. He's still ahead 1k. But you can really... Yeah, like, now the unit value is really starting. I'm really starting to run away from him unit value-wise. 31 to 20. And again, he has to... <laughs> he actually attacks my tank. That's kind of cute. I think he was getting frustrated there. Wow, he's... Is he? Oh, he's trying to get the hyper upgrade. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Yeah, he's, you can see he's taking a bunch of weird engagements to pop hyper upgrade mid turn. That is what he's. That is why he's attacking. It's not a bad move, honestly. It's a, very nice of him to be able to spot that in a live format. Yeah, he's taking every engagement he can here. Every engagement. He badly wants to get hyper upgrade this turn. I think he's gonna get it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So fifty four thousand. And let's see the value he gets. From 54,000 up to 76,000. That is a strong hyper upgrade. Now, of course, popping your hyper upgrade mid-turn kind of sucks that you won't be able to get those firepower bonuses. But but he also gets the one extra movement on the Antire. This is a pretty devastating counterattack, honestly. Like, this is what I mean when I say, don't underestimate King Arthur, even though you're ahead. He finds attacks like this on the fly. He's very resilient. Sadly, though... Despite of the brilliant counterattack that that was, and it was a brilliant counterattack, he's still struggling just due to that 20% firepower increase. And it's very hard to butt heads with someone who just punches so harder than you, you know? Every time you punch them in the face, they punch you twice back. Like, it's hard to keep that going, you know? So, uh, but to his credit, he's keeping it going. I now have a bomber out because my economy is starting to look really good. That bomber is going to threaten him now. He only has two Antire, and they're so vulnerable. When your opponent has a 20% firepower uh, advantage, walling becomes incredibly rough to do. And he needs to wall perfectly to keep those Antire alive. And walling perfectly in a live match, you can see he's trying, but it's so easy to poke holes in walls when your opponent doesn't have the time to think them through. Here, he is trying very hard to interrupt this base, but I might even get it. He even frees, he frees out a, his airport, but I still have that Antire in the vicinity. He gets a good shot on his tank against my Antire. Interrupt some more caps. He's definitely not giving up. Builds another medium tank. I don't know. I don't know if I agree with this, honestly. I don't know if I agree with this. My turn rolls in. Yet another Urban Blight. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Urban Blight's so disgustingly strong on this map. King Arthur is about to lose his base. King Arthur is about to lose his base, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm blocking his airport as well. And now, suddenly, captures are happening everywhere. And look at that. Oh, you see it. You see it, don't you? Wait, 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 wait. What are you doing, Minx? What are you doing, Minx? You have a bomber who can... How did I not see this? Come on. I have a bomber that can attack on a city. What? What am I doing? Are you serious? 
Was I really this stressed on time? What the hell am I... What? Oh, I, I guess the Antire is the... But, oh, okay, all right. Let me take a look at this one more time. I think I could have killed it. Okay, so... Bomber goes onto the city, kills medium tank. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, no, never mind. Yeah. Okay, I probably didn't do it because... Hmm. Okay, all right. It's very tempting, but yeah, I would have probably lost the bomber. So maybe, maybe, maybe live mangs. Oh my god, look, look at how disgusting this is right now. 5 HP Neo Tank versus full HP medium tank. Power up. 7 HP of damage. I mean, this firepower that Kindle gets when attacking from cities is just bonkers. I don't know what they were thinking when they designed her. 80% and 100 and what, 40% I think? 130% she gets from superpower? Not that anyone ever pops her superpower to begin with. I mean, it's garbage, but... Um, <laughs> and I know I'm going to get a couple comments like, I popped Kindle superpower. Yeah, it still sucks. No, but I, I popped it. No, no, it's bad. And, but 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 I played a match once when it... Shh, 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 shut up, shut up, shut up. It's not good. Stop, 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 it. stop, stop it. I don't care. Bad. So, uh, yeah. Okay, alright. I see why I didn't move the bomber in here. Another anti-air, of course. This is what I like to be anti -air. I love this. Bomber forces out so many anti-air, because anti-air is kind of a garbage response to bombers. Because they just don't really... They can die so easily. Here I'm pressuring his east base. I got two tanks in range, and I started going after his anti-air. You see, this is, uh... I mean, how the hell are you supposed to defend against this? Now I have his base? And, yeah, I'm just capturing properties everywhere at this point. Blocking his airport. At this point, any normal player would have resigned. But King Arthur is simply not like other players. He is a very resilient guy. And he refuses to yield. He is just one of the most annoying players ever. <laughs> he just won't He just won't give up. He just won't give up. And the worst part is, sometimes, he even manages to make a comeback. Of course, I think we can all see that in this particular situation, there really is no coming back from this. I don't think even Inkogark or Degis or Go7 would have been able to come back from this position right here. It's just too bad. Now, finally, the bomber comes in. And again, just look how many opportunities Kindle has to get city attacks on this map. It's disgusting. Look at this. Antire versus Tank on City. It wins. Another Urban Blade. Boom. And yeah, looks like King Arthur is about to be slain, ladies and gentlemen. But first, we just have to watch me pummel him for a couple more days before he actually resigns, because that's just how he works. Does get a hyper upgrade. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, never mind. That's not even a hyper upgrade. That's a hyper repair. Okay, I was like, wow, he has a superpower yet? No, he just popped his normal power. Combines his tanks. Yeah. I <laughs> he come. <combined> oh. <laughs> And builds a pipe runner. <laughs> Great move. <laughs> Great move. From King Arthur right here. <coughs> I have a mega tank on the field right now because this 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 match is ridiculous. And it should have been over three turns ago, but you know, I mean he wants to fight, that's fine with me. I'm enjoying myself. I build missiles because uh no way I'm gonna let him be the only one to build weird units in this match, so. And I do believe, ladies and gentlemen, that he resigns. There we go. Just gets one shot up. Did you know pipe runners can attack air? Maybe now you know. So, I beat King Arthur. I have a pretty good track record on this map. Beat beat Star Flash for the first time. Beat beat King Arthur for the first time. In live matches, mind you. They're a little bit uh, more um, volatile. But still, pretty happy with this uh, victory. Again, it can't really compare it to the first game I showed. And I know that. Maybe I did a mistake showing my best game first. But um, I still think this was a cool game. And it's it's nice to finally score a victory against this, this, this very annoying guy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Maybe I can beat him in a regular match one day. We'll see. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed this match. There will be, as I said, there's going to be two more replays commentaries. I'm going to try not to do them all in a row so you guys don't get tired of the match. But I'm going to cover my own tournament performance obviously and then I really want to cover voice of Akasha 
because he's also in this tournament, and you guys know he's insane. So uh, I'm probably going to do the Voice of Akasha game last, and that's going to be the fourth and final game that I'll do on this map. So I hope you guys aren't bored of Harsher Truths yet. I think it's a fantastic map, one of the most entertaining maps I've ever played. I hope it honestly comes into the Standard League pool. That would be absolutely wonderful. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. GG, King Arthur. Well played. Bye-bye.